are we going, everybody? How you going, Vader? Hey, hey, Vader. He's just come up here. Car is hunting a couple of rabbits over there near the dam. We've got a little square dam over there, folks. We're talking citrus again, an update on our citrus trees. Uh, a lot of people have been coming in and emailing regarding their citrus. Went to spray them with CGWS. Snails are attacking them, fertilizing them die back and things like that. So we're just gonna go through the ones that I've got. There's a few little ones in here we've been touching base on. They got attacked by rabbits, but we've also fertilized them and I haven't pruned them back. And this is what you're gonna notice if you've had some die back, even from adverse weather, because we've had rainfall and today it was meant to rain, but it hasn't, but look at this. So we've got some die back down here. Look at all that there. So you have gotta go in there and cut it all off, clean it all up, even the labels, loosen them up folks, because the stems do thicken up as well. Here's the thing about labels. If you're gonna keep your labels on your plant, this is old, I should have laminated or something like that. Hold it there, don't mind my dirty nails. Do a couple of twists on the label and then reattach it to the plant. Two or three twists so it doesn't fly off, but a little bit loose like that. So that's a good way to do it. Now all this at the bottom, get rid of it. Waste of time. And if you don't cut it off, it will work its way back to the lower part of the plant. I can't even get in here. Look at all this catnip, it's just gone wild. Just bear with me because I'm going to just smash this out while I'm here because otherwise I'll forget to come back and do it. I'm using the Lowe's number one secateurs, which is an anvil pruner. It's not a bypass. And for those who don't know what that means, it lands on the bottom um, blade or the bottom base or the base. So you can see how it does that little cutting effect. It does that sliding. So it sticks out a little bit oblong, so it's not quite, you know, symmetrical. And as you cut down, it does a slicing effect at the same time. So it takes a lot of pressure out of the squeezing part of your hand. A couple of sizes of these as well. So that's it there. That is a sublime, nice. Over there, if you're looking, there, I can't even remember what that is. It looks like a mandarin to me but it's got beautiful growth on it at the moment. So I'm not gonna walk in there now, but you can see all the luscious new growth. And we'll go over here. This is the one that got eaten almost to the ground, folks. And citrus trees, regardless of what the type they are, whether it's lemon, orange, or lime and mandarin, they are quite resilient. They can bounce right back unless something's really killed. And I'll show you, what, how do you, I'll show you later how to kill a citrus tree. But for now, have a look at this one. We've got the new shoots coming up. Still too young to worry about doing anything. There's a lot there. I'm not going to bother thinning it out. I need it to get up to about this height here. So if you cut your tree right back down to a stump or just the trunk itself, it will bounce back up as long as the root hasn't been damaged or there's no uh, collar rod or you know, ring barking going on. That's the tree guard that I've got around there so I can protect it from the catnip and keep it warm. And the bees are out in action. Let's move along. This is an Ellendale mandarin. Now we've cut this back once, but you can see nothing's grown out of that. And we've got the label in there. We've got something small growing there, but let's just get the label off so we can clean this one up as well. And every tree is different. You can't expect to prune every tree the same way. I mean, if they're identical in shape and size, fantastic, lucky you, but you know, if you're making a hedge of them or a ball or a topiary of it, that's fine as well. You'll end up just shaving it all the way around on the outside, but creating an open vase on the citrus tree is vital for good airflow. And problems that occur this time of the year, snails and slugs. I'm gonna cut that off completely, and I did a shit job of that. There we are. That's gone there, put the label back on. So snails and slugs will be prevalent on citrus trees, especially with this moisture. There's a huge amount of snail um, presence at the moment in gardens, not only in the veggie gardens, in flowering beds, and obviously fruit trees, especially citrus. A good tip on that one there, the copper tape, the copper snail stopper is what we call it. It's a copper tape, that, it's got an adhesive side on one side, just once around the trunk of the tree is a nice barrier. It creates a little zap or current which when a snail tries to travel over it. So it's a deterrent from it traveling further up the tree. Otherwise get some geese. This is a lime and I've been waiting for this to sucker up from the bottom. See what it's doing down here? Finally got that happening, but I'm not gonna remove the top yet. What I'm gonna do is take this, this one here down, this branch here, and I'm gonna work it back down to these, this little forking over here. See that there? We've got one there on the left or right and one there. So we'll just cut it about there like that and that will help the tree bring it down. Look at that. We've lost a little bit there. We'll just cut it above the fruit line like that. So this is the damage caused by weather, snails and slugs and caterpillars as well, folks. So discoloration will happen on your citrus trees. Look at this one here. There. 
take that tip off. Whether it's the it's weather cause or an insect, you need to prune it off. It's no point just leaving it there. Now, if you haven't fed them, and like I didn't feed a batch of trees that I have down at the bottom end of the property, uh, they're going to be struggling. I'm sure they're going to be a little bit yellow on the leaf, dropping their leaves as well. Or if you've actually fed them and haven't used an organic based fertiliser and used something synthetic, sometimes we can apply too much and that can shock the trees as well. And that'll cause it to shed all its leaves, dropping them to the ground, leaving it completely stuck naked. Now, if there's no dieback, and what I mean by dieback is this stuff here. So imagine your tree's lost all its leaves and there's dieback happening, you need to cut it off. Even if there's no dieback, it means the tree's alive, you still cut it back down a little bit, so you just do a tip prune. But if it's a lot of dieback, you've got to get back down to the green growth. That's where it's going to be vital and the, the sap's still flowing. Get rid of the dieback, otherwise, as I said earlier, it'll just keep traveling down. This one, a light prune like that, don't worry about eating leaves, that's fine. If you see caterpillars on it, just squash them. Use Dipal if you like, that's a nice biological based um, insecticide, has no effect on the tree di directly. The bacteria eats into the uh, caterpillars. This is where I want to bring the tree back down. All right, I'm standing next to it, it's sort of mid height, waist height here. If I get this tree to grow out, it'll probably get to about two meters, two and a bit meters tall. I don't want it that tall, I actually want it lower. So even if I lose this part up here, I know some of you are saying, well, four, you've already got the shape there, but this is going straight up. Look, I've got two, three, six, seven, eight limes on here and another four over there or five, but I want to start it from down below here. I want to get a short trunk and low branches. So it actually grows from here. And when it does get to two meters, that's its maximum height. So long term, you know, project here, short term enjoyment and allow the tree just to evolve slowly. If you're really keen to get it happening quick, cut it off. I'm not going to do that yet. I want the limes to go yellow. That's when they actually ripe. You know that not green. We're in a fire pit area, look at this. Look at the growth on this. And again, some dieback. This is what I mean. You'll get some nice bounce back. Folks, these were all fed, so you know what I'm feeding my trees with. It's our superfood and black grid. Or just the planting mix, which has got basically everything in it. But the superfood and black grid is what I use on these ones in particular. And it's the, um, the pre-mix bags that we have, or pot buckets, sorry, not bags. And this is the result. Now, black grid is meant to reduce the acidity level in the soil. So technically it's not meant to be good for citrus trees. I know I've said that before, but <laughs> what do you do here? What do you say about it then? And everybody who's used black grid, I know many of you have actually reached out to me, have told me the same thing. As soon as you apply black grid, bang, the tree just goes nuts. And that's what's happened here. It's going fantastic. Now these were drowning in water. Um, have a look at these. We've got them all around here. Ring barked almost, eaten by the rabbits. I haven't taped this one up, but all nice new growth. This one was almost dead. We nearly lost it, folks. Here, we still got some dye back there. Jeez, look at this. I've got to sacrifice this to avoid that. I don't know. Should I? I'm going to try, see if I can save it. It's dying there. I'm just going to sit back and wait for this one. If I get any more dye back developing there, then I'm going to cut it off from below and let it start again. But for now, it's still doing really well. Still a little bit of leaf curl. Have a look at that. You know, the, the mandarins are just are notorious for having leaf curl on them. Caused by weather. And it was meant to bucket rain today. What happened to her? Here I am preparing myself psychologically for these, this downpour. And it hasn't happened. Now I'm wishing that I didn't get the rain. Go figure that one out. Yeah, I'm losing my mind. Plenty of flowers, plenty of good growth, real healthy. And even this one here. Don't worry about the leaf curl. I'm not worried about it. Doesn't affect the tree that much, really. It just looks ugly. But look at this. More die back again. This is what I mean. Got to cut all this off. Mosquitoes too bugger me. So cut off all the die back, clean them up. And now with all the new growth, get ready for citrus gall wasp. It's going to start attacking your trees. Oh yeah, we are in Victoria, and I know in the northern parts of Australia, the warmer regions, it's already been active. So CGWS and our citrus uh, gall wasp trap are the two things that, that only really work. They're designed specifically for controlling it. So when you do prune back a tree, you see now what I've done here. I've gone from one tree to another, had a look at a couple of branches, cut off the die back, removed one branch that I didn't like. No more than that. They're only really small. Larger trees, move, remove two or three branches that you don't like. But if you go there gangbusters onto the tree and start chopping into it and bringing it right down, it's going to jump back up with so much new growth, which is great. But what's going to happen there is 
you're going to lose a whole cycle of flowers and fruit. You don't want to do that with citrus trees. Different with fruit trees, they've got a cycle in pruning and, and, and uh, feeding and flowering, so they do that once a year. These plants do it almost throughout the year, and by cutting them back too hard, you lose that whole cycle for that year until you establish that new nine-month-old growth where the flowers start to appear from. So you need to keep the tree pruned on a regular basis rather than smashing into it all at once. Look at this one. This was underwater. I don't know if you remember, if I ever showed it to you um, in previous little uh, episodes. This was completely underwater. We're using grow bags or grow pots, and you can see the, the green, the algae. That's how high the water was, okay? So if this was an actual plastic container, the tree would be dead, waterlogged. That's the benefit of these grow pots. I can't stress enough how good they are for citrus trees because they love their feed. Cit uh, superfood and black reed is what I use. Pick your favorite organic fertilizer, but if you're going to plant something in a pot, they may not look nice to you like that. Use a clay pot if you like, but honestly, for the tree, <laughs> this is a grapefruit. Look at the green leaf on it. Okay, what do we got going on here? Okay, look at this. A little bit vain, it's almost like a mosaic. That's the new growth. I don't like that. I'm just going to take that off. I don't know what it is, and I'm not going to wait to find out what it is. It's okay, we've got plenty of plants, leaves coming on here. Can you see that? This is coloration. It almost reminds me of a mosaic virus that happens on tomatoes and potatoes and things like that, but that's not it. Anyway, it's off there for now. This one's not happy. Why are you not happy? Oh, you really? You're already drying up on me. This one needs another feed. Look at that. We've lost all this on the tips here, folks, and we've actually shaped it for that purpose. Messy, I am going to do this, and I'm going to do that to it. All right? This is reaching out. Remember, I said we're going to have to start printing this back? Well, now's the time. This is a lemon tree that I think needs a feed, another feed. This is what will happen to those who don't get enough fertiliser or maybe too much water. Now, I was saying earlier these are draining well, and they are, but this looks like it actually needs another feed now, folks. So, we're going to feed it. Time to cut that off as well. Don't freak out at me. Done. That's actually too high. There we are. Yeah, all right, whatever. I suppose you're going to say to me I pruned it too hard now, huh? <laughs> well, this one needed to be cut back. We had one, two, three branches I cut off and just tip prune this one over here. I've taken off a lot, so that's a hard prune, not a big prune. That means I haven't gone through the middle and cleaned it all up. So I've left all that in the middle. I've taken it all back. I expect it to burst out. We've got a flower. So look at this flower. So look at this flower. Look at this bud. Okay, see it? See it? Get rid of it. Don't need it. Don't need any flowers at the moment. I need this to come good. Let's move along down to the bottom and where we only fed last. You ready for the surprise? Okay, these trees were sitting underwater. This is where we were flooding out completely, right? And we had to, I came in here and gave them a feed. So like I said earlier, it was just a shovel of superfood and black reed, and that's all I did. We'll go in and you will see what I've done um, later on. But look at this, look at this ring barked, completely ring barked all the way around, gone, gone to heaven, gone to heaven. Not a single bark left on the outside. No sap flow. Lime tree cooked. Yep, we lost this one, folks. Lost it to the rabbits. I had the tape on it. I actually did remove the tape thinking it's going to be okay, but I removed it too early. And they came straight back and attacked it. You like this one. This is electrical tape. Now, if you're going to remove it, always remove it when it's dry. Don't remove it when it's wet and it's easier to peel off like that. See that? So anybody worrying about how it's going to be peeled off, it does come off easy. It's got to be on a dry day, not after a wet day, folks. A couple of yellow leaves, but it's okay. Look, new growth. It's actually kicking in. This is the superfood. There's a clump here left. Didn't break down properly here. I didn't spread it out properly. But it's all around there, a shovel of each of the, um, around each tree. And let's go and look at the other ones. Now, I don't know if you remember. Oh, I nearly killed myself. It would have been three weeks ago or something like that, that I came out here and fed them. You can remember I actually showed you the track marks. This is where I drive through with a ride on to give them a feed. And look at it there. That's the actual superfood crusting over, right? That's just 
billions upon billions of good bacteria in there feeding the tree. All this tree was like this. This is what it was like. That's what was happening. These are the old leaves here, folks. These are the new leaves coming good. This may actually need another top up. That's from what I see here. I can actually give it another the little feed, but the black grit, it's gone nuts again with all the flowers. Just take off the yellow leaves and no harm in those. They're not going to come green again. Just know that. And this may need another prune a little bit later on. Bit of a cleanup. So this is a lemon eureka, folks. Mandarin, flowering. We haven't had enough heat to get new growth on this one down here. So this is a bit of a shady spot. As you can see, all the big trees around it. Rust. Here we go, we've got rust developing. Just monitor that. You can spray it if you want with a disease control pack, but I'm not going to spray it. I'm just going to monitor that. And if you have to, just pick the leaves off. If it gets really severe, you're going to have to sacrifice the flowers and actually spray it. But if you sacrifice the flowers, this is what happens. The little bee there will get upset with you because it's busy collecting its pollen. This is the one that I was worried about, and that one there. That, that was almost ring barked by the rabbits. Here's the superfood. Superfood and black grit again. Yellowing. That's the dying off because it wasn't getting enough sap flow. Dropped its leaves, no chlorophyll, no sugar's been developed. Now that we gave them it a feed, look. Yep, a little bit slow. I'm hoping I get something through the middle here again. Otherwise, I'm just going to cut all these off and just let the outside. You know what? I'm going to cut them off anyway now. I don't need this one and I don't need this one. Okay, we're going to open this one up there. Let's hope this starts to come good as well. So we've got a bit of growth on that side. Let's hope we get a little bit on this side. Lime. Okay, we were talking about the ties earlier. Have a look at this. Come down here. First, let's get rid of all this. All this low stuff, it's just messy. Like that. Now look at that. Look how tight that's gone. All right. This is what we call ring barking. Choking the tree. Take it off, loosen it up, tie it a couple of times, and rehang it somewhere loose. Now this one had lost almost all its leaves, and it's come good. All this new growth. This is what I'm looking for. Beautiful. Bit messy to clean up. Just I take the dye back off the tips. Just tip pruning, folks. Tip pruning. That's another way you can actually stimulate more growth on your plant. Just go around and take the tips off. Not really hard. Uh, not a hard prune. But I'm really happy with that. That's going to come up really good. Just got to thin it out a bit more down below. A few too many low branches. Now, citrus gall wasp, snails, rust, as we saw there earlier. You know, lack of nutrients, too much watering uh, will cause all uh, lots, of, lots of problems in your citrus trees. Any of those, I've shown you many a times on how to look after them. And eventually you should be able to get some beautiful fruit. We've got an orange that's bursting out. And we've got a huge, huge, I've got some grapefruits here. Still yellowing off a bit there. These are huge, folks. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, you can get our superfood, black grid and all that stuff on our website, vasilisgarden.com. Everything you need every day. Real people, real gardens, real food. Our 20% off coupon code is going to end probably in another day or two, I'm not sure, but just monitor that. And if you're looking for something special in your garden, to plant in your garden, well, you'll find it at the one place. Your online store, vasilisgarden.com. From me, Vasily, Maresi.